Uh, we'd like to start with a uh, with an opening, oh, start. just with an opening statement. Oh. Then. Okay. Coach, right here. You want me next to you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah cause you need to tell me something. <laughs> yeah. We welcome uh, the University of Arizona, uh, Coach Barnes, and we have um, Sam Thomas, Lauren Ware, and Shana Pellington. Um, our format today is we we'll ask Coach to make a, a brief opening statement, and then we'll. Open it up for 15 minutes of questions for the student athletes, then they will be dismissed. And then the last 15 minutes just for Coach. Coach, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, March is here. Extremely ex excited, second time in history. We host the NCAA tournament. It's ironic that um, the last time we hosted, I was a player and actually forgot about that until you guys reminded me. But um, first two rounds in Tucson, I think it's, it's, it's extremely exciting. I'm one of the best venues in the country, and we're playing a really good team, so I think it's going to be a great game for women's basketball. So extremely excited that March is here. Thank you, Coach. We'll open it up now for questions for the uh, athletes. Hi, Sam. I know you've probably been asked this question a zillion times, but I'll ask it again now that it's an official press conference. Describe uh, how exciting it is for you to be able to match up against your sister and to have your, your mother and father in town again to watch both of you as siblings take it out on a, in a one-and-done fashion. <laughs> uh, yeah, super exciting. Um, March, obviously, is a really exciting time on top of that. So just knowing that I'm playing against my sister, I know my parents were worried at first once she won her conference tournament, like, how are we going to split up the family? Who's going to go see Sam? Who's going to go see Jade? So to have her here, it's bittersweet. Obviously, it's nice that all my family can be in one place, but then someone's season's going to end, hopefully hers. So, <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> a quick reminder, uh, when you ask a question, give your name and affiliation. 
Javier Morales, All Sports Tucson. Lauren, um, with Kate coming back, what's that been like in practice and preparation for the this tournament? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always nice just to um, have Kate on the floor with us. We're really excited to have her back. Um, she's a huge part of this team, obviously. So um, just getting her back on the floor and in practice and stuff, it helps us out a lot. And it helps me out a lot as well, just because I learn a lot from her and she makes me a better player. So we're just really excited to have her back. Also for Lauren, Brian Finley with the Arizona Daily Star. Uh, you're coming off the two best games of your college career. Uh, was it just a matter of more minutes or was it something else you've been doing? Um, I think it's just um, a confidence thing and just like time of year, I think. Um, I put a lot of work in and my teammates have helped me out a lot as well and my coaches and stuff like that. So just putting me in a position to be successful, I think is what kind of got me to that point. Are you trying to get her in trouble? You know she can't say more minutes with the coach. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah, more minutes. That's the reason why. She can't say that. Come on. I was like, you're running today. No, it's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to set you up. So no I know you, you had that really ugly injury here in December. But how long before you were able to feel good again, even though you were healthy? How long before you felt like you were back? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, it's always hard coming off of an injury, just kind of getting back to 100% and feeling completely normal. So I think um, it de definitely took me a while to kind of get back into the groove of things. But I definitely feel like I'm 100% now, and I'm feeling comfortable on the court. So, so Probably like a month. Say, yeah, right? yeah. Because I think there's, there was hesitancy at first yeah. and, and then just not feeling as strong when she had been in such good shape. And I think it, it took her a while to get her win back But because mm -hmm. I, I see the difference the last couple of weeks. So we're talking about mid-February. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say she was out for like five, like five or six weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say it took her to come back. It probably took her a month. Yeah, because she was back, but then like you could see how she landed and just not just a little um, – hesitant and I think just playing more loose and free and I think it really showed in the Pac-12 tournament because a lot of it's a mental part and confidence because mm -hmm. even if it's structurally okay I think it's just that happened you don't want it to happen again she was just out six weeks so and, and we had we had to adjust without her so I'd say it took her like a month. Mm -hmm. Damian Alameda K Wealthy News 13. Shana how would you compare and contrast sitting here today inside McHale preparing for the first round versus where you guys were a year ago preparing for the first round? I mean, it's very different. Obviously, we get to host, so I, it's different being, you know, at home. You know, we had to come through, we had to go through security just to get into McHale. You know what I mean? So it's kind of odd, but um, we're super excited um, to prepare for the tournament. Um, and we're really happy that we get to be here and play in front of our fans, so it should be a lot of fun. PJ Brown, Arizona Daily Star. This one's for Shana. Shana, the last time you played in a tournament game, you had one of the best games season last year probably the best this time out what's it like now coming back and playing again in the tournament and um, with with this team and and what your goals are this year um, it, it like I said before it's really exciting you know to, to be back in the tournament and get a chance to do something special at home so I mean like um, I'm super pumped I know my teammates are super excited as well um, but we're kind of just taking it you know, one game at a time, you know, focusing on what's what's at task right now in, in this moment um, and are we looking to, to, to the future, really. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm super excited. We're all super excited. So, yeah. I remember Shana's approach is a little different because last year she had a different role. So I think that just it's a different approach, I think, um, and just a different situation. But the good thing about these three is there's experience. So I think um, not going to the tournament because of COVID, and then going last year, and then experiencing that when we were an underdog, when no one in a million years, probably not even us at the time, thought we'd be there, and then got hot. So I think that the approach this year is one game at a time, just like last year, but anything's possible, and they decide if they want to do that because we're very capable. Uh, Nate with All Sports Tucson. Um, with, the le with the amount of uh, experience coming from this team, as well as hosting a game at Mikhail, um, can you describe the confidence factor going in? For Shana, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're all we're all super um, confident and just like I said before, I keep saying the word excited. But to be here and to have the opportunity to do something special again, like we did last year. So I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun for us um, getting to you know play at home, play against these really good teams, and get to prove ourselves yet again that we are deserving of being here and that we're one of the best teams in the country. So. Ryan Fish with Keg on Nine. This is for any of the players, Sam. I know you know this UNLV team better than most, but for any of you, what jumps out to you about this team as you prepare for them tomorrow that you know, could be an issue, could be uh, you know, something you have to look out for to be ready? 
Um, I'll go first, I guess, because I probably know them um, a lot better. I probably watched every single one of their games this year that we weren't playing. So um, just knowing that they're um, they're pretty young, they're a new team. Obviously, I think that we were talking they have like eight or seven or eight new players um, on the team. They're coached by Lindy LaRock, great coach. Done amazing things with the program in a short amount of time. So just knowing that they're coming in, they're coming in hungry. They know they have nothing to lose. They have a lot of connections to Tucson, so there's probably going to be a lot of people here cheering for them as well. So just coming in, knowing that we have to stick to our game plan, the scouting report, follow what we do, and know that this is just another opponent that we have to cross in order to get to the championship game. We're not focusing on the outside factors. We're just focusing on the game itself. Front row. Kim Doss, Arizona Desert Swarm. Lauren, I asked you this after Pac-12 about staying aggressive after Kate came back. Now that she's back, how has that been for you as far as your staying aggressive? Yeah, um, I think I'm just kind of approaching it the same way as I usually would. I mean, obviously with Kate coming back, it's going to help us a lot offensively and defensively, but um, I don't really think that changes what I am going to do um, from here on out. So I think I just need to, like you said, stay aggressive and stuff like that. And I mean, Kate's going to help me with that as well because she opens the floor a lot for us because, I mean, she's a big target on the inside. People are going to defend her really tough. So I think that'll help me a lot as well and help me stay aggressive too. Hi, Andy Morales with All Sports Tucson. So I cover a lot of local high school girls, and they're, they're all wearing U of A women shirts, and they're wearing Sam shirts. I think they're wearing Sam shirts more than yeah. U of A shirts, though, but I'm not mad so, about that. I mean, Sam is the Maybe Sam and Coach, can you talk about the atmosphere and what you created here in Southern Arizona with, with the, the younger uh, boys and girls, I yeah. guess, in the city? Yeah, I feel like we kind of brought a little bit of excitement to the younger girls um, after our run last year. And then having Aerie being a WNBA draft pick, I think that just brings excitement to the city itself. And then knowing just like Tucson basketball is rising, uh, South Point women's basketball just won their state championship game. So, you know, everyone's coming into Tucson and we're raising the <laughs> we're raising the stakes for basketball. Everyone's doing a great job. So, And then just knowing that we're supporting each other. Um, we're looking out for their games. They're watching us, obviously wearing all of our gear and merch and all that stuff. So it's just a great atmosphere that we're creating here. When I think as a coach, um, when you have a job, or you know, I went here, so obviously my alma mater, and so there's a little bit more of your heart in Tucson. But I think that you want to create a place or in a space where ki little kids and little girls aspire to go to U of A. Like I don't think that it was like that before, because and a lot of that comes from success. More people come, they follow you, and you're successful. But when you win, it's just it's contagious. People want more, and. Um, I think having little girls want to come to Arizona and play one day, that's what you want to create. And I think that our team has created that with on the court, with success, but also off the court with, I mean, the fact that she even knows about Style Point, um, the fact that she goes, to, she goes to games. So she goes to little girls' games and stuff. And I think that um, connection with the community creates a completely different vibe. And I think that um, it shows what kind of mentors they are. So I think it's bigger than basketball. It's who these kids are and what they've created, and they've done that. And it wasn't like that when I first got When I first got here, I remember when I first took the job, um, the first two or three months, I did not hear one good thing about Arizona basketball. And I was kind of like offended because I went here. I was like, what? You know, like, but um, now it's great things. Now little girls, little boys, you know, wearing, when I look in the stands, I see Sam Thomas shirts all over. It, that's really cool. And I'm glad they got the NIL deal. And she came, she's here in the perfect timing before she leaves because she can make a lot of money. But in, in Tucson, our community, Sam's on EG's, all these things. I mean, her stuff sells out at the pop-up shop in front of Mikhail in, in an hour. So people love her because of basketball and all the stuff she does off the court. So that's just role model um, being at, at its best. And that's what they represent in our program. We've got room, time for just a couple more questions for the student athletes. Uh, Sam and Lauren, UNLV's strength is looks like they're rebounding. They have four players with at least 100 rebounds, and Young has almost 300 rebounds. I mean, talk about that challenge um, going against their front court there and the rebounding. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we know they have um, some pretty good post players, some good inside players, and rebounding is one of their strengths. But, I mean, um, boxing out is something we've been focusing on for the past couple of games, and I think we've improved a lot in that area. So I think um, we're ready to show that um, we're a good rebounding team offensively and defensively. And, um, yeah, so I think we're going to be pretty good in that area. And we have, and we have more size, mm -hmm. so we should be good. But they are relentless on the boards, especially even offensively. They're guards. But I think that um, – also, you know, mid-major, the posts are typically smaller. And I think Pac-12, you know, we're typically a lot bigger. So, you know, no, you know, some of their players are 5'10", we're 6'3 to 6'5". So it's just a little bit different. But, I mean, 
we by no means approach this game like it's a mismatch. We know they're a very good team and they're capable of winning. So uh, in my opinion, they're better than the 13 seed. So um, we know we respect them and know we have our, our um, every, it's, it's gonna be hard on the inside, outside and rebounding is an area we, ha we have gotten a lot better in. This will be our last question for the student athletes. Sam, Jade told us last night you're afraid of the dark. Care to comment? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why would she say that? Um, well, I shared a room with Jade my whole life, and she's always the one that wanted the nightlights, so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. That's funny. It's a good one to end on. Uh, we're <laughs> student athletes can be excused. Thank, Thank you. you. That's funny. That's funny. And Why now we'll have uh, 15 minutes with Coach. So when you see Sam hack Jade, it's your fault. Yeah, that's why. Like, don't say that. She's in a hacker. <laughs> They're funny. They're funny. Yeah, they are. It's good. Hi, Coach. Uh, oh. Ryan Finley here, Arizona Daily Star. Hi. Um, not to ask about minutes again, but but what's reasonable for Kate? Uh, as she plays her first game in a month? Um, I mean, obviously not 40 minutes, cause, just because of wind, not because of anything structurally. She's very healthy, feeling great, looking great. I'd say increments of, we train typically in our practice five minute increments, we call them five minute wars. Mm -hmm. And that's typically what a game is for media timeouts and stuff, give or take. So I'd say, um, I'd say, you know, four or five minutes straight and then a media. I'd say minutes wise overall, I'd say 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna play the whole game, but n with, our, with our style, it's difficult to play anybody 40 minutes. So um, I'd say 30 minutes. And that was the thing about holding her out for a little bit longer and not pushing her to get, help her get her win back. But it's going to be a first game with emotions, with adrenaline. So that's just, you know, fatiguing. But um, I think she's fine to play 30 minutes or more. Uh, or probably not 15 minutes straight. Sure. Of those 30, how much do you anticipate will be her and Lauren on the floor at the same time? A lot. A lot of it? Um, a lot of it. They have very good chemistry together. Um, they read each other well. They play together well. They complement each other. Um, and now it's, it's even better with Lauren being a lot more of a threat and a lot more aggressive. So I see them playing together a lot. But the good thing about Lauren and Kate is then we could play with the bigger big. So Araya is really good with Lauren. Araya is really good with Kate. Nettie, um, you know, Koi. Koi can play with either because they can both shift to the five. So I think we have a, a, a few different combinations, but definitely those two will probably play the most minutes together. Um, you know, because now it's it's do or die time. So, and I'm I'm just glad Kate's back, even for uh, just the fact of the morale of the team and the confidence. Um, so even let's say she played less, she's still impactful and she's still helpful for us to win. Ryan Fish from K-Gun, uh, you've had a bit of a layoff here, and you even tweeted that usually you think that layoff between the Pac-12 tourney and the NCAA tournament is too long, Way but too this long. year you needed it. Other than having that recovery time for Kate, how do you think that time helped you? Um, so typically I do say this, this two week break is way too long. Um, I still think that, but this year selfishly, I was like, oh, it's perfect. You know, so that's obviously for my own personal reasons. Um, giving Kate more time was beneficial to us. Um, practicing because of where we're at and how new so many people are was very beneficial for our team. We got a lot better in the two weeks and we needed it. Now on last year's team, um, we still needed it actually because I think for most basketball teams around the country, this end of February, March is, or this like beginning of March period, like Pac-12 period, it's really long. Um, it's kind of where the kids hit the wall. It's like finals and a lot of academic stuff when you're gone. And then it's, it's a stressful tournament. It's like one and done. And then all your friends are going on spring break, going to Cancun and all that stuff. You're not. And, and I think it's just mentally, it's kind of a lot of teams hit that wall. So I think to reset and stuff like that and to practice and work on your, your weaknesses and have some days off, I think is very helpful. And last year at the same time, we needed that. We kind of imploded. Um, around the Pac-12 tournament, we did not play well, and then we got hot. We worked on some things, took a mental break, reset, and we've done the same thing this year. So I think you're going to see us play a lot better basketball. I, I really, do, I really feel that way. So two weeks are beneficial. So on that note, um, mm. offense, it was not good against Colorado. Yeah, not good at all. How are you feeling about it now? Um, I think that. A couple of reasons why it wasn't good. Um, typically, like last year, we, we didn't shoot the ball as well, percentage-wise or just personnel-wise. But then we killed zone offense, zone defenses. 
Um, I think what made it hard for us was adjusting to Kate gone, not having a presence inside. We had a guard playing the four, and then going two for 24 from the three, which won't happen. I mean, we're typically 36, 37%. So I don't think that'll happen again. I think um, a lot of those shots will fall. We had open good looks, and they just could not fall. Um, but, you know, I think learning that then you don't have to live and die by a three, learning to move the ball and get a layup. I think we've learned a lot and worked a lot against that for now because I know that we're going to be zoned. Um, but having Kate in the middle, wanting the ball at the, at the free throw line, having another rebounder inside, I think it's very different. Um, so I don't if, – if Kate played in the Pac-12 tournament, I think we would have had a lot of, of a better chance to be more successful um, just because of the chemistry and her and Lauren playing together and just knowing each other, not playing people out of position. So, um, and I do think I anticipate being zoned tomorrow. I'm not a ton, but I anticipate the zone press and zone. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with that because our personnel, and, and I wouldn't mind that at all. And we will not shoot two for 24 ever again. So I, I don't think so. That's my next question is, what do you think hosting is worth in terms of points per game? Playing on a familiar court, playing in front of your home fans, I don't, is I, there a value to it? There is a value. I don't know points wise what to put the value on it, but... Um, if you look at our record, we're 12 and one at home. Um, I think I think it's 12 and one, and um, we hadn't lost until the UCLA game for, since I think around December of last year. So we're very good at home, and I think everybody's very good at home. I think if you look at UNLV, they're very successful at home. You're confident. You're in your same routine. You're playing in front of your crowd. Um, for us, we draw like we're top eight in the country for attendance. So um, we know that we're going to have 8,000 people. That is a tremendous amount of energy. When you're pressing and getting a steal and you have 8,000 people going crazy, I think that's worth points because you're more motivated. Um, so I think that it's extremely valuable. I anticipate I want to sell out tomorrow. Um, I think realistically we'll probably get 12 or 13,000 because of our men playing and because of spring break. Um, but I'm okay, but most, most teams aren't prepared to play in front of 12, 13, 14,000 people. And um, that's how many we're going to have. It's a very tough environment. It's a very hard to play here. Um, and we know that, and that's an advantage for us. And um, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Yes, do we love playing at home? Do we play better? Absolutely. But most teams across the country shoot a better percentage from the three and two at home. So, and we do too. So I'm happy we're home. Um, I'm extremely excited. And to host the first two rounds, it, it's, a, it's a blessing for us. So um, do not take that lightly. And I think it's going to be fun. In the back and then up front. Damian Alameda, KOLD. Adia, so what specifically do you like about this matchup against the Lady Rebs? Um, I like any matchup in March. I mean, I don't love South Carolina or something like that, but besides that, you know, but I think if you looked at the bracket last year, if people looked at that with big eyes, like, oh, UConn, Texas A&M, like I was like, ooh. But I think anybody can be anybody. We're seeing today there's a lot of upsets. Um, I like the fact that we're home. So I, don't, I wouldn't care if the matchup is against anybody if we're at home. I'm on the road, we go fight, we'll do it early. If you look at the beginning of the season, we were tremendous on the road. And then we kind of had some injuries, we had some people out with COVID, and we struggled on the road a little bit. But besides that, we were great on the road. Um, but at home, we're better. I mean, everybody's better at home. So I, I like any matchup at home. Um, I think that UNLV is better than the 13 seed. I think they're very good. Um, I think they have a lot of new players, but they're not experienced in the NCAA setting. And some of our players are. Our whole team isn't either. But our, our core players, they played in the championship game. So I think that's going to um, be very valuable in, in March Madness, in the NCAA tournament. So, um, you know, playing at home against UNLV, I know that I think that our – I don't think they face anybody with our kinds of pressure. Um, I think that, that we have a little bit more size inside. Yeah, but so I think it's going to be a good matchup. By, by no means do I think that we're way better and should win. By no means. I think they're a very good team, and they're very capable of beating anybody. Um, so I think that we have to approach the game, and we have to play well. And from now on, you have to play well. But now this is do or die time, so we're going to see who steps up. And we saw that last year. Aries stepped up big. Shayna stepped up big. So I am anticipating that. And our players are going to step up. I think Lauren's going to play the same she's been playing. I know Sam's going to be really excited to beat her sister. Um, I know that our players are fired up and ready and know that we had, didn't end the season playing our best basketball. So I think that um, we are very motivated and um, I think very focused on the task at hand, which is UNLV. Yeah, so you, you talked about your core players having, mm -hmm. you know, obviously NCAA tournament experience, but what if, how, what if, have you been trying to, you know, prepare some of the younger players, such as, you know, Madison Connor, to play at home in, in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, as a overall, I think that coaches, like, you go with your horses in the tournament. I think now is not time for me to experiment with lineups. Now it's time to win. 
So if that means you're young and you're ready, then you play or you don't. And I think that's the reality. People don't say that, but that's the reality. Um, Maddie has experience because she came from high school. Remember, she came during the year and she experienced that. So she knows what that feels like. I think the only players that don't would be like Anagra, Gisela, Nettie. But I mean, they're playing behind some experienced players. So they will, like, they'll have opportunities, but it won't be as much. So I think at this point, you go with, um, you go with who you know and who can help you win games. And it's, it's not time to, to give the freshman experience. It's time to win. So you got to go with what you know. And um, they'll get experience from being there and being a part of it. Front row. So you know, I know that the last two weeks is, is the time that you take to prepare for the tournament. Mm -hmm. And usually during this time, like last year, there was a different vibe. Like all of a sudden, they came together, the team came together. And they hadn't been playing as well as they mm. hoped to. Same as this year. Same as this year. Did something like that happen during um, these last two weeks? Do you feel a real different vibe that they've kind of flipped the switch? They know it's March. They know it's go time. I do. I, I've felt that way for a few days now. Um, I think that having some time off, resetting, just taking a, a breath of fresh air, you know, being off a few days, I think that helped. Um, I think it was also a reality check because losing the Pac-12 tournament to Colorado, a game we needed to win to secure hosting and secure a seed, it didn't happen. So I think there was a reality check of that. We have to play better to beat teams. Um, but I do see a difference. I see a difference in our chemistry. I see a difference in our togetherness and want to win. So we're going to play better. And if you think of um, back, like I'd say probably around the Oregon game, we were playing some high-level basketball. Um, at that point, I, I knew that we were better than last year. We were better offensively, we were better defensively, and then we kind of had a shift. And then I think, you know, you lose a couple games, you start wondering why you lost, kind of looking for someone else. Then you have Kate Lauren out, then you have Kate out, then you have a couple people out with COVID and different things. So I think that just kind of rocked the boat a little bit. Um, but it is what it is, can't control that. Now we're healthy, now we're all back, so now we got to do what we have to do. And I really, truly feel like we'll go back to playing the way we were when we were at our highest level. And, and that's the way we have to play to go deep into the tournament. So then to be clear, Kate is 100%? Yeah. Well, I think that if you look at anybody, if you look at our team, no one's 100% in March. Like there isn't one team around the country that everybody's 100%. You're banged up, it's been a long season, you, you're sore, you're fatigued, all those things. Um, but yeah, Kate is 100%. Um, you know, she's ready to play. And 100% meaning is she ready to play? Can she play? Can she be physical? Is she limited? No, she's not. So yep, she's 100%, she's ready. We have time for one or two more questions. Adia, when you look at UNLV, Essence Booker is like, it looks like she's their heart and soul. She, her numbers are phenomenal. How important is it for like Bendu or Shayna, I don't know how you're going to defend her, to limit her as much as possible? Um, extremely important. She's uh, the heartbeat of their team. She's a catalyst on offense. Uh, she can score in a lot of different ways. Um, she's their primary ball handler. She can take pull-up jumpers. Um, she can shoot the three. She can drive it. She's a great passer. So she's an elite player, and we definitely respect her, and she's definitely going to be an area of focus for our team. Um, we know that um, we have to slow her down and control her, and, and she's going to score because she's a good player, but we have to make her work hard to score. So she will feel pressure, and um, we have to, and that's what we need to do. So, um, But, you know, in the post, they're really good. Um, Des is a good player. Uh, she's really good back to the basket, good rebounding. She commands a lot of attention um, on the floor. So, um, but besides those two, they have a complete team. They, they play about seven, and they have seven talented players. A lot of their players can play in the Pac-12 and be impact players. So um, we know we have our work cut out for us, but as they have, we have tough matchups against them, they have tough matchups against us. And I think some of our size and our, and our pressure can, can um, affect them. I don't think they've faced our kind of pressure all year. Who do you think will be your X factors in this game and, and for the tournament? Um, I mean, I mean, Kate's our X factor right now because she's coming back, so she's a factor we need. I, I think it's, I don't think we have one particular person. I think that um, because we don't, we're not we're different than we were last year. If you look at like the top 20 teams or top 10 teams, there's usually a really big star go-to player. I feel like we're built a little bit different this year. I feel like Shayna has to step up in the tournament. Um, she's got to be productive, like low assist to turnover ratio. Um, Lauren has to maintain her aggressiveness like she did when Kate was out. So to me, it's by committee. Um, Helena has to look to score and distribute the ball. 
Um, Sam has to be aggressive like she was in February. So I think everybody has to step a little bit, step up a little bit more. Kate has to come back and be as aggressive as she was, and she has been in practice. And Bendu has to play that great defense and look to score. Um, and then when we bring our shooters in, they have to look for shots and, and be solid. So I think that everybody has to step up a little more. I don't think there's one person that has to be any better. Um, Coy is going to be very important because Coy is great at our, in our pressing. Um, she's good at our defense, and she can attack the rim. And then Araya has experience. So Araya's played in the tournament before. Um, she's a bucket inside. So I, I think that everybody has to do, do a little bit more, and there isn't one particular X factor. It's going to be by committee, and it's just going to be a team effort. Coach, with that, we will uh, say thank you and thank you. let you go. Thank you. Don't forget to wear red on, um, on Saturday. Even though you guys are supposed to be neutral. Yeah. <laughs> so be, be neutral on your red, please. <laughs> Just a uh, reminder, the recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com and transcripts will be provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Our next uh, press conference is Stephen F. Austin at 2.05.